scripture says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, people can change. Their attitude towards you changes from one moment to the next. But there's never a day that God forgets the ones he chooses. And the scripture says that he delights in us and that he rejoices over us with singing. It says Forget not all his benefits, who crowns us with loving kindness. Do you know you are crowned with loving kindness? 
who heals all your sin, who heals all your sickness and forgives all your sins. And he satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is restored like the eagles. So Lord, we just thank you this morning that you are the same, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the healer. You are the savior. You are the good shepherd who leads us and guides us. And you satisfy our mouth with good things and crown us with loving kindness so that our youth is restored. And I believe even in here right now and over the live stream that you are restoring our youth, Lord. That you are restoring us. And we say, create in us a clean heart, O oh Lord. And renew a right spirit within us. We love you, Jesus.
is almost gone, but that just means I was worshiping. You know, he deserves it all. If we lose our voice screaming at a football game or a UFC fight, not worshiping the risen king, then something is wrong on the inside. We are the redeemed. And the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And I've noticed some people that have been set free from a lot, they praise a lot. When you know where he's brought you from and where he's redeemed you to, there's a reason to praise, there's a reason to shout, there's a reason to clap. And it's because I know nothing could wash away my sin but his blood.
of overcoming we pour out on you. In times when we're questioning, we pour out on you, Jesus. Because worshipers worship. And Lord, your word says that you seek worshipers. And today we ask that you would receive this offering that we bring to you. A sacrifice of praise and offering of worship to pour upon your feet, to say that you are holy, to crown you as worthy, king over our life, over our heart. You are worthy. Just for a moment, let's just remain here in this atmosphere of worship. I'm reminded in the scripture of uh, Mary who brought the bottle of oil to wash Jesus' feet. And it was the most undignified thing because she actually used her hair to wipe his feet. But it was all she had and she was willing to give all she had. And in that moment, other people looked at her and said, why are you doing, why are you using this oil? Because it's, it costs too much. It costs too much. You should have sold that oil. You should have done something else. That costs too much. But Jesus is worthy of the best that we can give. And that's all we're trying to do this morning is just give him the best that we can give. It may not look dignified, it may not look all put together, but it's the best that we can give. Jesus, we bless you this morning. We give you praise and everybody said, amen. Why don't you turn to one another this morning? Welcome everyone here. Well, glory. Woo. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. Man, 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 man. We welcome you today. Praise God. Glory to God. There's some, so, much good, so many good things happening. Um, I just want to read a couple of scriptures, and then I'm going to move real fast and turn this over. Dorcas is going to share a little bit this morning about our children's program and about uh, ministering to children, etc. Uh, we welcome you, hallelujah, to the house. Hey, guys, Ryan, Courtney, good morning. How are you guys doing? Ah, praise God. Woo, glory. Uh, we just have a, we've got a, just, I'll get this out of the way. We have a wonderful time of fellowship planned afterwards. And... Uh, if, you, if you're prepared, if you brought something to go with pizza, fine. If you didn't, how about hunger? That's a pretty good thing to bring to go with pizza. Uh, we've got, we're going to have plenty of food. We've got food. We've got, we, we've got, we have pizza. We have lots of sides, drinks, etc. So after the service, uh, we, will, we will go right back to the fellowship hall and enjoy that. After, the, uh, after the, everyone eats, or let me say it this way, parents with children, we have out back a couple of water slide items for children. Everybody says, I'm a child. No. <laughs> for children, no. 
But we do ask this, parents, if your children are going to enjoy the water slides afterwards, uh, when we dismiss from here and we go back, please make sure they eat first. You found this on the web. I didn't ask you to find anything on the web. Smartphone, smarter than I am, thinks. Uh, we ask you to, to, to see that they get food first so that they won't get out there and not have some food in their stomach, uh, all right? Uh, in the back, there's water, there's, there's drinks, there's all kinds of stuff back there. So uh, parents, help us with that. Let your children eat first, and then let, they can go out and, and slide and play in the water and stuff, amen? <clears throat> but we do need some supervision out there. We don't want the children out there by themselves. So parents, you can help us, or you can swap off. You can get grandma and grandpa to go help, or you can get somebody to help, amen? Praise God. Let me read a passage real quickly here. It just rose up in my spirit. I know you know this, but I want, I, want, I, want to, I want you to just listen. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. <laughs> you know, when you're not faithful, God still is. When you don't have all the answers, God does. David said, if my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. You know what that means? There's never a time when the Lord walks away. Never. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. You know, honestly, sometimes in human relationships, our compassion fails toward people. Maybe yours never has. Mine has, I'm sorry to say. God's never does. Here's what he says. They are new. What? Every. You know what this is? For a few more minutes, morning. This morning, God's mercy was new again. His compassion was fresh again. Notice. They are new every morning. Great is Notice, more important than my faithfulness, more, now, more important than your faithfulness is the, the faithfulness of our God. So critical. You know, our faith comes from the faithfulness of God. Paul said, I don't want your wisdom, I don't want your faith to stand in the wisdom of men or being able to wrap your brain around everything, but your faith to stand in the power of God to show up in your situation always and see you through. Hallelujah. They're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. Notice this. Says my soul. Notice where the emphasis is. It's not on me and mine. It's upon God's my portion. Whatever I need now, he's got it and he's available with it. He's my portion. That's what my soul says. Notice it's a mental a mental decision. God, you're my portion. If I don't see it here in the natural, you're my portion. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Notice this next phrase. Therefore, because of that, I hope in him. You know, we go over to the New Testament and show you hope is the anchor of your soul. Faith is the operation of the Spirit of God, but, but hope is the expectation that anchors your soul when everything around you is going, do, do, do. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. How many of you waiting for God in situations today? 
Huh? Maybe, maybe you don't have any, but I got some that I'm waiting on God. Meaning, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in go mode saying, okay, God, whoo. I lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. Hmm? The Lord's good to those who wait for him. To the soul that seeks him, it is good that we should hope and wait quietly. You know what that means? With settled heart, not knocked around in turmoil. Hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. I'll stop there. Hebrews 13 says, look, God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am with you always. We're to boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Everybody say that quickly. The Lord is my helper. Say it again. The Lord is my helper. Now, that's Bible, that's scripture. That's straight from God. God wants us to know, us to know he is your help. Goes on to say, the Lord is my helper. Therefore, I will not fear. <sighs> I mean, understand if God's your helper, it, it puts fear out. If, it, if, we, if we accept that and believe that, it puts fear out. Paul and Silas in the prison in Acts 16 put fear out by worshiping and praising God and praying, and everybody heard them. <laughs> Ooh. And who was their helper? The Lord was their helper. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm sorry, babe. I told, I couldn't get into her time here. That just rose up in me strong. All those songs about faithfulness of God. Let me understand where we focus our heart, our affection, our attention. Jesus said, if your eye is single, I always see Cyclops, single, your whole being will be full of light. Which means if, you can, if your focus is central and, and, and greatly connected to God and always there, other stuff around you won't move you out of the position of your heart of faith and expectation. When stuff's moving, I understand stuff's moving today. The word says everything that can be shaken will be shaken so that which cannot be shaken will remain. So there's some stuff that's shaken and moving. You know what's not? God, his word, his faithfulness, his goodness, his promise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Though the earth be removed and cast into the sea. Huh? Though the mountains be removed, cast into the sea. My trust, my hope, my expectations in God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, babe, you gave me the microphone to come up and say a few things before you. So. <sighs> Hallelujah. I want to say a big thank you. Our dog show uh, Friday night. Uh, was a wonderful success. How many of you got to come and be a part of it? We want to thank Michael and Christy and Elizabeth helped a lot with stuff and anybody, everybody else that helped our judges and anybody that came and helped and participated. It was wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I didn't know there were so many beautiful dogs in Del Rio. Some were beautiful to their owners, but they were beautiful. I have one of those at my house. He's so ugly, he's pretty. <laughs> he's got tooth look good, teeth like this. Rascal, you're not listening, are you? No. Praise God. But thank you. It was a great success. And people were blessed. People were excited. People had a great time. And so we thank uh, Michael and Christy in particular for being out on the lead of that. And uh, glory to God. And we had a great, great, great time. And we understand it will probably be doing it again in the future. Hallelujah. Uh, just a quick uh, note. You'll note some things that are canceled for this week again. You say, why are we canceling some things right now? Because we're in the process of doing a number of things. We're painting a number of rooms inside the building. We're actually going to be uh, in the process of doing some... Uh, 
uh, construction, destruction, <laughs> in a good sense, in one area in the building this week. Um, and so it's really, a, it's really a hard deal to, to keep normal stuff going on when you've got, you've got all kind of things like that happening. We've got a lot of things we've got to get done in the, the, this next week. Uh, and so um, you'll notice we're not doing intercessory prayer. We're not doing our praise and our prayer and worship, uh, prayer and live worship, uh, and the real church and our Wednesday night family also. We will start that back up. Please don't stone us. Everybody okay? Uh, we just, we're trying to get a lot of things done without a bunch of bodies trampling through the stuff. <laughs> okay, so hallelujah. Uh, our, our men's Bible study that will, will be going on this coming Saturday in the Fellowship Hall, 8, 8.30, 8 o'clock, sorry, 8 o'clock. And it's a great teaching by uh, Tony Evans, and, and uh, we encourage you to be a part of that. And it's going to be a great, 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 great time. Hallelujah. Also, there's uh, notice in your bulletin, there's four ways you can give to, to, uh, to help us stay strong here at Grace Church financially as we move forward. Online giving, or you can mail it in uh, to our P.O. Box, 421897. Or you can text to give, or you can cash up. It's all right there. And we do appreciate you being faithful. And uh, hallelujah, in the summertime when people are in and out, we understand that. When you have an opportunity to go, go. Right, Courtney, you guys? You have an opportunity to go, go. Because school's about to start. Things are about to get back into a regular, more of a regular routine, a slotted routine. And so take advantage of time with your family and go see family and friends. And, and amen. Praise God. Glory, glory, glory. Uh, anything else, dear? Uh, we're going to, if our ushers would come forward, we want to pray over our tithe and offering this morning and give you an opportunity to give into the kingdom. And, and as we're doing this, I'm going to ask you if you would, uh, put your faith with me on a couple of situations for uh, uh, Nadia Smith, who is at the at the uh, ER right now. It's been there since late last night. Uh, I, unless it's changed, I tried to reach Robert a while ago. Somebody may have some more current information. Unless I have, uh, she was scheduled for actually for a blood transfusion here. This this uh, any time now. Unless I, like I said, that's the last info I have. Uh, so we just want to we want to pray and believe God for uh, strength in her body, wisdom for the doctors, uh, and also for Mike Green. You know, Mike and Debbie. Mike had a lung transplant, and and, and it's a process. Uh, it's a process, and and uh, there's ups and downs. There's you know uh, some things. Sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's challenging. It's a process uh, when when a foreign entity is put into your body, and then your body has to adjust and all that goes with that. And so we want to hold up Debbie, and we want to hold up Mike, uh, of course, Kelsey and Rachel and their their husband and fiancé and those all that's involved there in their family because it is it is a process and it is it is something they're walking through. And it's, uh, uh, so we want to pray for them. So let's pray over our tithe and offering, and then we'll pray over those two requests. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you today with tithe and offering. You said bring all the tithe and offering into the house of God, into your house, that there be meat, provision, finances in the house of God. And you said, see, test me if I'll not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that there be not room to receive it. That we'd have flood tide blessings. We'd always have enough and more than enough at the point of need to do what you instruct us to do and to have extra above that. So Father, we worship you today through Jesus, our mediator, our high priest, and we offer to you tithe and offering as spiritual worship, knowing that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. Bless your people, bless their gift and their giving, and multiply it back as you said you would give us bread to eat, seed to sow, and you would multiply the seed that we sow. And so, Father, we pray also for Nadia. We pray, Father God, you touch her physical body. We don't know everything that's going on, but we know by the stripes, Lord Jesus, that you bore, healing is in the covenant for her. And we thank you for ministering to her physical body, even right now, and giving the doctors wisdom as they're looking at what to do and what should be done. We thank you, Father God, for healing and health and wholeness and soundness, and for Mike to his physical body. The 107th Psalm verse 20 said, you sent your word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So Father, we thank you that your word is sent into him in that hospital room in Houston that strength comes, health comes, stabilize him in every area, bring healing to the 
places where incisions were done and let supernatural recovery come to his body, uh, empower Debbie and the girls, empower the whole family and the medical team, Father, as they are doing what they can do. Let the strength of God come to him, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen, 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 amen. I'm sorry, baby, I took so much time. Forgive me. No, it's good. It's all good. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm excited. I believe if we've got anybody new, this is a little different today. But, you know, the world is trying to tell our children what the truth is. And it's very important that we as parents and we as a church let our children know what the truth is. And so there's lots of different ways to do that. Lots and lots of different ways. And one, you know, I've just been really praying about it because, you know, there's sometimes there's the devil is the author of confusion. We don't want our children to be confused about who they are. Amen. <laughs> we want them to know. And so I'm, uh, as I was looking through children's church curriculum, we wanted to kind of make some changes and tweak some things. Um, you know, there's the biggest story of all. You know, as kids, we've got, you know, Toy Story and Lion King. And, you know, some of our children really know those well. But then there's the stories of the Bible. And we've heard about David and Goliath and Jonah and Daniel in the lion's den. But do we know how they connect in the biggest story of all? And do they know how the gospel unfolds in that? And do they know where they fit in? So we're going to talk this morning about where we fit in. The world is trying to catechize our children. but The church needs to. The church needs to be the one that trains, and that the truth will stand. So when somebody else tells you something, you'll know the truth. And it'll roll right off of you like a duck. The water rolls off a duck's back. Amen. Praise God. So we have some special things for you. We're going to start with a video where it all began. Thank you. If you guys can go ahead and roll. Okay. Chapter 1. And so it begins. Genesis 1 to 2. In the beginning, there was God. Actually, that's not quite right. Even before there was a beginning, there was God. He never started. He always has been, always is, and always will be. God is God, and there is nothing else and no one else who compares with him. God doesn't get lonely or bored or scared. He doesn't need anything from anyone. He just is the great I am, whether people know it or not. But don't think that makes God a meanie. 
There is nothing mean about him. God is all love and all glory all the time. Which is why in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God made everything, day and night, land and water, fruits and vegetables, sun and moon, swimming things and flying things, big burly beasts and little creepy crawlies. In the span of six days, God created our amazing universe. The power and beauty and goodness of our invisible God would now be visible. Of all the special things God made, the most important thing was not a thing at all. It was a person. God may have been fond of fish, and he probably liked camels and kangaroos too, maybe even spiders. But he created man in his own image. That's us. We were made to be pictures of God's glory, living, breathing statues whose work in the world is to show that this place belongs to God and to tell everyone what he is like. The first person God made was Adam. He came from the dust of the ground. The second person God made was Eve. She came from Adam's side. They were both made in God's image and they were made for each other. A perfect fit, just like God had planned, so that husband and wife can be together and make lots of itty bitty baby image bearers to fill the earth. Things were off to a good start. God was pleased with his creation. He looked around, saw that everything was tremendously terrific, and rested on the seventh day, a perfect beginning to the beginning. Amen. Did you catch that? That we are pictures declaring the glory of God. Think about that. When God made you, he didn't make a mistake. And you know when somebody calls you something like dumb or stupid, I know what that's like. I, I was called those things. I was a little bit slow, not very coordinated. I had a, a headgear that I wore. I had braces. So they called me Tinsel Tooth Taves. <laughs> but you know, that was all right because I had the glory of God inside of me. And so, you know, we may be kind of playing out on the outside, just like this box. It's just kind of, it's gray and blue, just kind of plain, isn't it? You've seen a box like that. But Jocelyn, why don't you come up here and sh show us what's in this box? Yeah. You want to take it out? You might have to dump it out. All right. Thank you. Wouldn't you love it if this was a real diamond? <laughs> but look how the many facets, even though it's glass, how it catches the light. You know, that's the way God made you, to reflect the glory of God. You're an image bearer. You're made like God. He said, let us make man in our image, just like us. And that's also how we can, uh, we were made to communicate with God. Isn't that special? It's, it's like when we get in that, that place where we don't know what to do, but there's a secret place with God that we can go and he understands all. There's a verse, I just love the whole chapter, so I'm going to read bits of it, though. Psalms 139. Lord, 
You know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every movement of my heart and soul. And you understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like a book. And you know all the words I'm about to speak. Before I even start a sentence, you know every step I will take before my journey even begins. You've gone into my future to prepare the way. And in kindness, you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. Isn't that beautiful? You've laid your hand on me. This is just too wonderful, deep, and incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. We're going to read the second part of that in a little bit. But you know, that's how special you are to God. It wasn't just, you weren't here by accident. You weren't a mistake. You were divinely placed here at this time in history to be his image bearer, to reflect the glory of God. Isn't that a wonderful thought that the creator made me like him? To share his goodness, to tell the world how wonderful and awesome he is. You know, I have a story that is one of my favorites. If I could get you guys or whoever was going to help <laughs> to move the, the television. It's a story about how sometimes, remember I told you, how sometimes people call you names. They call you things that you're not. And that's why it's so important to know who you are, who God created you to be. Amen? Yes. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to get this plugged in real quick. While they're doing that, I want to share something real quickly. There's all kind of different ways. I have a table back there that's got all kind of different materials to share the, the Lord Jesus with your family. One of the things my dad did, he had what he called a promise box. And if you come up close, you'll see that cards are very tattered. Because every time he'd go buy it, he would pull one out. He'd read the verse. This one says, God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes, from their eyes. And it says on the back, Dear Savior, help me to grow in your grace, even when hearts are failing. So he would just go by. This is, you can see, it's really worn out. I found a new one. <laughs> but, you know, something little like that, is a way to get the gospel in. You can leave it around your house. My dad had them all over the place. And every time he'd go by, he'd pick one up. Or you can leave it at your table so when your children sit down to eat, they can pick one up. You know, it's, it's quick. You know, but five minutes of something is a lot better than a whole lot of nothing. We've got to take every opportunity to share the word. Amen. Are you guys good? All right. So this is one of my favorite stories. If I can get it here. There we are. And it's about the Wemmicks. Have any of you heard about the Wemmicks? They were small wooden people. All of the wooden people were carved by a woodworker named Eli. His workshop sat on a hill overlooking their village, and each Wemmick was different. Some had big noses. Some had large eyes. Some were tall, and some were short. Some wore hats, and others wore coats. 
but all were made by the same carver and lived in the village. All day, every day, the Wemmicks did the same thing. They gave each other stickers. Each Wemmick had a box of golden star stickers and a box of gray dot stickers. Up and down the streets all over the city, people spent their days sticking stars or dots on one another. The pretty ones, those with smooth skin and fine paint, got, always got stars. So, I'm going to be a Wemmick here. Star. She's so beautiful. <laughs> but then, if the wood was rough or the paint chipped, the Wemmicks got gray dots. That wasn't very nice. The really talented ones got stars too. Some could lift big sticks high above their heads or jump over tall boxes. Still others knew big words or could sing pretty songs. Everyone gave them stars. Some Wemmicks had stars all over them. Every time they got a star, it made them feel so good. It made them want to do something else and get another star. Others, though, could do little. They got dots. So I need, Thaddeus, would you come help me? Thank you. I'm going to get you to be Punchinello for me, okay? Is that good? Now, I want you to know, Thaddeus knows who he is in the Lord. Okay, so he's just going to play Punchinello for me. Thaddeus is super duper intelligent too. So, okay, y'all understand that he's just playing a part for me. Okay, you're going to play Punchinello. You remember this story? Yes, you do. Okay, so what happened with Punchinello? He tried to jump high like others. Can you try and jump high? Okay, and, and then he would, he would fall, and others, would they would gather around him. Let's turn around where they can see you. And they would just put gray dots all over him, you know. But he would try. Sometimes when he fell, his wood got scratched, so they would give him more gray dots. And then when he tried to explain it, He'd say something silly, and the Wemmicks would give him more dots. Oh, my goodness. It's not very good, is it? Okay, thank you. You're so good. So, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, he's taking him off. He knows who he is, okay? Anyhow, after a while, he had so many dots that he didn't want to go outside. He was afraid he would do something dumb, such as forget his hat or step in the water. And then people would give him another dot. In fact, he had so many gray dots that some people would come up and give him dots for no reason at all. He deserves lots of dots, the wooden people would agree with one another. He's not a good wooden person. And after a while, Punchinello believed them. I'm not a good Wemmick, he would say. The few times he went outside, he hung around other Wemmicks who had a lot of dots. And he felt better around them. One day, he met a Wemmick who was unlike any he'd ever met. She had no dots or stars. She was just wooden, and her name was Lucia. It wasn't that people didn't try to give her stickers. It's just the stickers didn't stick. Some of the Wemex admired Lucia for having no dots, so they would run up and give her a star, but it would fall off. 
<laughs> Others would look down on her for having no stars, so they would give her a dot, but it wouldn't stay either. That's the way I want to be, thought Punchinello. I don't want anyone's marks. So he asked the stickerless Wemmick how she did it. It's easy, Lucia replied. Every day I go see Eli. Eli? Yes, Eli, the woodcarver. I sit in the workshop with him. Why? Well, why don't you find out for yourself? Go up the hill. He's there. And with that, the Wemmick, who had no stickers, turned and skipped away. Punchinello yelled out, but will he want to see me? Lucia didn't hear, so Punchinello went home. He sat near a window and watched the wooden people as they scurried around, going, e giving each other stars and dots. It's not right, he muttered to himself, and he decided to go see Eli. He walked up the narrow path to the top of the hill and stepped into the big shop. His wooden eyes widened at the size of everything. The stool was as tall as he was. He had to stretch on his tiptoes to see the top of the workbench. A hammer was as long as his arm. Punchinello swallowed hard. Uh, I'm, I'm not staying here. And he turned to leave. Punchinello! Punchinello stopped. Punchinello, how good to see you. Come and let me have a look at you. Punchinello turned slowly and looked at that large bearded craftsman. You know my name? The little Wemmick asked. Well, of course I do. I made you. Eli stooped down and picked him up and set him on the bench. Hmm, the maker spoke thoughtfully as he looked at the gray dots. Looks like you've been given some bad marks. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to, Eli. I, I really tried hard. Oh, you don't have to defend yourself to me, child. I don't care what the other women think. You don't? No, and you shouldn't either. Who are they to give you stars or dots? They're women just like you. What they think doesn't matter, Punchinello. All that matters is what I think. And I think you're special. Punchinello laughed. Me? Special? Why? I can't walk fast. I can't jump. My pain is peeling. Why do I matter to you? Eli looked at Punchinello, put his hands on those small wooden shoulders, and spoke very slowly. Because you're mine. Punchinello had never had anyone look at him like this, much less his maker, and he didn't know what to say. Every day I've been hoping you'd come, Eli explained. Well, I came because I met someone who had no marks, said Punchinello. I know, she told me about you. Well, why don't the stickers stay on her? The maker spoke softly, because she has decided that what I think is more important than what they think. The stickers only stick if you let them. What? The stickers only stick if they matter to you. The more you trust my love, the less you care about their stickers. Oh, I'm not sure I understand. Eli smiled. You will, but it'll take time. You've got a lot of marks. 
But for now, just come and see me every day and let me remind you how much I care. Eli lifted Punchinello off the bench and set him on the ground. Remember, Eli said as the Wemmick walked out the door, you're special because I made you and I don't make mistakes. Punchinello didn't stop, but in his heart he thought, I think he really means it. And when he did, a dot fell to the ground. So can anybody tell me who Eli was? Oops. He turned us off. There we go. God, right. God's our creator just like Eli. And you know, there's that special secret place we can go. You know, maybe you're feeling bad about something or whatever, but there's a secret place you can go with God and let him tell how much he loves you. And you tell him how much you love him. Amen. We're made to have fellowship with God. And he begins to put dreams inside of us. He begins to let himself be put more in us. And then we just get brighter and brighter and reflect the glory of God. So we have some things right over here. And I have some posters in the back. Um, maybe some ushers could pass them out. I don't know if we have enough for everybody. But make sure all the children get them. Okay? So remember... We're like a treasure chest filled with the glory of God. You know, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, quickens us, brings to life our mortal body. So, you know, this one's a little more pretty than the other blue box, but it's still God brings, makes different people in different shapes, sizes, and forms, with different talents and different dreams. You know, you may want, you, God may place in you the desire to be a doctor or a teacher or just any number of things like the Martinez's. God put in them and also Tirza and her family to cook. They love to cook. And so does Laha. <laughs> she loves to bake. You know, God puts those desires inside of us. And when we give ourselves to that desire, God's glory is shown upon the earth. We reflect the glory of God. And just like Tyler, I don't think you'll mind me asking, he's a pilot. He flies those great big old huge planes. When did that desire come inside of you to be a pilot? Okay, so you had a flight, and that was a desire came in you. Yeah. Doesn't it feel awesome, though, to fly those big planes now? But did it happen by accident? No. You had to work, right? really hard. You know, he's, he's extremely intelligent, as anyone can tell, but he had to work at it. You know, God puts gifts inside of you, different special things, but it's as we submit to God and work hard that God develops that inside of us. And the more that happens, the more of his glory is reflected in us. You know, so I want to just read a few things about what God says you are. Number one, it says that God says we're chosen. John 15, 16 says, I have chosen you, and I've chosen you to bear fruit, much fruit. But you know, um, what that just means, that means God placed inside of us to be productive and fruitful. You know, and, um, the next one says, we're a child of God. 
So don't let anybody, when you receive Jesus in your heart, you're a child of God. That's Romans 8, 17. We're redeemed. Do you know what that word means, redeemed? When you redeem a coupon, you buy, you purchase something. Well, we were redeemed from the curse. Jesus died in our place, so we're redeemed. We're a new creation in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, you are a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are new. We're loved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We're forgiven. 1 John 1, 9 says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Do you know what righteousness is? It's right being made right with God. So un means that he takes away all the un being like God. And he, when he died for us and we receive what he did, he makes us to be like God, to be righteous, to be holy. And you know the cool thing that we're forgiven is that once you ask Jesus to forgive you, he forgives it, and it says that he forgets it. He removes that from you as far as the east is from the west. Now, when you go north, you can make it to the North Pole, and then you go south. But when you go east to west, they never meet. So that's how far God has removed our sins from us when we ask for forgiveness. We're accepted. You know, maybe you've tried out for something. I know I was not very athletic. And if you see me now, you kind of figure that out. <laughs> but, you know, I was probably the last one chosen on the team, and I'm not exaggerating. Because <laughs> I just, I just was not very athletic. But you know what? I didn't let it get me down. I knew that was just wasn't my thing. You know, we got people that dance and flag, and I just watch them, and I'm thinking, how beautiful. But that's not my calling, you know? It's the way other people reflect the glory of God. So just knowing you're accepted and God has something super special on the inside of you. Oh, the next one, you're precious. You are so precious to God. And I'm going to finish reading in a second, Psalms 139. But, oh, he loves you. You are his dream. We're strong. How about that? Ephesians 6.10 says to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Isaiah 40.31 says those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary or faint or tired. They shall walk. I don't remember all of it exactly. But what a powerful verse. He gives us strength. How many of you like to be strong in the Lord? Amen. Flex those muscles. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, unique. God made you unique. Let me finish this. Psalms 139. You formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside, and wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it, how thoroughly you know me, Lord. 
You even formed every bone when you created me in the secret place. Carefully, skillfully, you shaped me from nothing to something. You saw who you created me to be before I ever became me, before I'd ever seen the light of day. Um, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Every single moment you're thinking of me, how precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. Oh God, your desires towards me are more than the grains of sand on every shore. That's how unique and special you are. You're created for a purpose. Gen Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. And also, we're treasured. We're, we're a treasure of the Lord. And special, Ephesians 2, 10 says, we are God's workmanship. We're his masterpiece. We're his poetry created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. So it's not like we find something to do and then say, God bless it. It's like God made us for a purpose. He needed us. And so he made you, Jade, because he thought one day, I need that. So I want to make Jade. And Jade, you have something very special inside of you. The gift that God's placed inside of all of us. And it's very unique and special. We're important. We're a chosen people. We're empowered. Remember that verse, Philippians 4.13? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We're never alone, and we are protected. One of the coolest things I love to tell children is that about their angels. It says that in the New Testament that their angels' faces are always before the face of God <laughs> on our behalf. So when we speak the word of God, it activates those angels and they surround us. They protect us. They're always there. But when you just activate them by speaking the word of God, they go into motion. They go into action. So I always like to say, you know, the angels are encamped round about me. They keep me safe. They keep me from all harm. So just to know that you have a special angel looking out for you. Amen. Isn't that comforting? We can sleep at night. So I just want to close real quick. But I want you to know you're not here by accident. God saw through time and he made you for right now. <laughs> he put stuff in you to handle all the stuff that's going on right now. He filled you with his glory. You reflect the image of God. You're an image bearer. You're made in the image of God, and don't ever forget that. So don't let people tell you that you're something you're not. Always go to that secret place. Maybe it's just in the morning when you're laying on your bed, you're awake before anybody else is, and, and God will start speaking to you through that impression in your heart about who you are and who he created you to be. Or even like when you lay down at night, whenever you worship the Lord, it's just getting in that secret place where it's just you and God. And God begins to speak to you in your heart about all the things he has for you to do. Amen? Praise God. So let's bow our heads, and we're just going to pray and ask God that he shines big in us. And 
If you're sitting here and you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart and and you never realized or even thought about being created in the image of God and you just kind of been sitting back, now is your day. This is the best day to receive Jesus. Just ask him to be Lord. You know, sometimes we think we've got the plan and we can do it ourselves. You know, have you had a child that was just so determined to do it themselves and they couldn't do it? But we're like that a lot. And we just want to submit to God. So if you're sitting here this morning, I just ask you to just surrender to Jesus. He loves you. You're special to him. You're created in his image, and he wants to fellowship with you. And so, Father, today we just submit ourselves to you. We cry out to you, and thank you we can call you Father because we're adopted into your family. And thank you, Lord, for making us feel special You know, the world tries to tear us down and tell us things that we're not. But I thank you, Father, for speaking to each and every one of us here today loud and clear that who we are in you. And we submit ourselves to that because we know you created us for a purpose. And we really find that joy and that contentment and that fulfillment when we give ourselves to you. So, Father, we just thank you for working in all of us here today, both to will and to do of your good pleasure. And if there's anybody here that they're sitting here and thinking, well, I've really messed up. And God, could you really use me? I've got lots of marks on me. Help us to remember that you never changed your mind about us. You never changed your calling about us. You never changed who you created us to be. So today we we can in confidence submit ourselves to you knowing that your working and your grace is more than enough that we need to go forward in life. I thank you, Father, for anointing each and every one here in this building, and especially the children as they go to school this year, that your anointing will rest on them in such a a way, and that they'll wake up every morning and they'll go into that classroom knowing that they are pictures that reflect your glory. And that'll change how they think about themselves and how everyone else thinks about them. That they'll be carrying your glory, your favor upon them and your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Father, that we're strong in you, Lord. We rise up strong in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you're sitting here and and you're someone and you're kind of struggling, we do have a prayer team, if you would mind coming up, those of our prayer warriors. And if you're sitting here, if you're a child or adult, it doesn't matter. You know, I know I delivered it more for children, but hey, (laughs) we all need this message to remember who we are. Somebody told me that the the negative self-talk is about 85% of our thoughts, that we have negative thoughts. So that's why we need to renew ourselves with the Word of God. And as parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles, we need to take every opportunity we have to show the next generation who they are in Christ. I want to read a few scriptures real quick. And if you want prayer, our prayer team's up here ready to pray with you. Psalm 71 says, Give me the grace to demonstrate to the next generation all your mighty miracles and your excitement to show them your magnificent power. Psalm 73, 15, If I had given... 
it talks about if I, your faithfulness goes on to the next generation. For perpetuity, God's ways will be passed down from one generation to the next, even to those not born. Your faithfulness flows from one generation to the next. All that you created sits firmly in place to testify of you. It's the living who thank you as today I do, and one generation makes your faithfulness known to the next. Be ready to tell your children and grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, your younger brothers and sisters, whoever it is, about the goodness and the faithfulness of our God. Amen. Praise God. So we have a meal. We have more than enough. We always have more than enough, right? <laughs> we serve Jehovah Jireh. He's the God that's more than enough. And my husband flows in that vein. He always likes to make sure there's more than enough. So if you didn't plan anything or bring anything, that's good to go. We have pizza. And if you don't like pizza, I think there is other things back there, too, that other people brought that you can enjoy. So um, if you want to go out those doors to the back, and please be respectful of these that are up here in the front um, receiving prayer, okay? And um, is there anything else I need to mention? We have the water slides. And remember, pastor said to eat first. So, okay, so we all got to eat first before we go on the water slides. <laughs> thank you, Lord. So, Father, we just thank you for blessing the food and your blessing being upon us as we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.